Hi everyone, Quivine here from CIT's Blackrock Castle Observatory. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at some of the more familiar and recognisable shapes in the sky, how to spot them and what they are once you've spotted them. I'll be referring back to a couple of our shorter social media videos that went up during the week, so if you get a couple of spare minutes, make sure to take a look at those. And if you'd like to learn more about stars and space and astronomy, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel using the red subscribe button and to get all of the most up-to-date notifications make sure you click that little blue bell icon as well. So we're starting reasonably early. We're here at about, this is 20 to 12. We'll push back to just half 11. There'll still be a little bit of a glow over towards the west, especially at this time of the year. We can see that just over there, but it's dark enough. Even in the city, we can see a lot of familiar shapes. So taking a look into the sky, there are a few nice bright stars that we can can make shapes out of and once you get used to recognizing these shapes it's the first step to spotting different constellations in the sky so for example taking a look over into the southwest just to the left of that glow of sunset we've got this nice wide trapezoid shape of Leo and I mentioned in one of the shorter social media videos the very tail end of Leo the nebula forms part of a diamond going down to the bright star Spica in Virgo up to the very bright Arcturus in Buetes and over to the slightly fainter Cor Caroli in Canis Venatici. This forms a nice big triangle in the sky helping you find four constellations with just one big shape. This is very similar to what we can do with the summer triangle. If we take a look over towards the eastern sky, there's very clearly a nice big triangle. The brightest star there at the top is Vega in Lyra. Then we have Deneb in Cygnus and Altair in Aquila. Cygnus also starts with this nice, almost T shape. It's really a long cross but the end star there is a little bit faint. So spotting the constellation of Cygnus, Lyra, Altair all in one go with that triangle and down towards the southwest being able to spot Leo, Virgo, Buetes and Canis Venatici all in one go with that nice big diamond shape. And not every constellation fits into a nice big pattern like this. For a lot of constellations, you're going to see it as a shape in the sky almost by itself. And this is partly because of how these constellations were created. The ancient Greeks spotted patterns or shapes in the sky and usually these individual shapes, individual patterns like this W that we see towards the north, this is Cassiopeia, these shapes became their own constellations. But of course, we've all got different imaginations. We could all draw different sizes and shapes of constellations across the sky. The Plough with the Big Dipper is one of the most recognizable shapes in the sky, and it's one of the most famous asterisms, but this is just an asterism. It's not a full constellation. Here in the city, the feet of the bear and even the front of its head, they're quite, quite faint. If we take a closer look, you can almost see them. If I bring up the constellation lines, they're a little bit more visible. But this is partly because of the time of year and our location in the city. We've got that glow over towards the northwest just under the location of the plough. But even with that glow, if we moved out to the countryside where there was less light pollution, those stars become a little bit more brighter, although that might not make them more obvious. If we move into the deepest, darkest parts of the countryside, there's a lot of stars visible in the sky, which is why these bright ones are so useful. Even with many fainter stars to see, the shapes made of these brighter stars still stand out thanks to their relative brightness. So by heading out to the countryside, you'll certainly see more stars, but luckily most of the very famous constellations have stars in them that are bright enough to be visible from here in the city. Of course, there's less famous constellations made mainly of fainter stars, and those can be more difficult to spot. But 
constellations can help you find other constellations. For example, if we're looking at the Summer Triangle, we've found three constellations, Lyra, Aquila and Cygnus. But inside this triangle, there are more constellations. Just underneath the triangle, a little bit lower than Altair, almost straight down from Vega, we have this nice, very, very small diamond shape. That diamond shape is a little faint. It can be tough to spot, but if you're looking at the summer triangle, a little bit lower is where you need to go. This is Delphinus. So it doesn't look much like it here, but this is a little dolphin, which is quite a nice constellation to see. The constellation of the arrow, Sagitta, and the constellation of the little fox, Vulpecula, they're both inside the summer triangle as well. So if we take away these lines and pictures, it can be pretty hard to spot. That's the arrow. So there's the front of the arrow and there is the fletching or the flight of the arrow. And just above it is Vulpecula. It can be pretty impossible to imagine the shape of a little fox in here. But if you've found the corners of the triangle, Vulpecula is going to be pretty much in the center, a little bit higher. So it's just there underneath Vega. Sometimes you can point out a constellation even if you can't see it. For example, on my screen here, I can't see Delphinus anymore. But I know that that's where Delphinus is because I'm coming straight down from Vega, just a little bit lower than Altair. So if we do a click, there we go. D-E-L, that's Sulakin, not one of the stars I've heard before, but it's Alpha Delphinus. So I know that that's the location of Delphinus. There are some constellations in the sky that are faint and tough to see, but the shapes of other constellations can help you find them. And even for brighter stars and brighter constellations, sometimes you might not be sure if you're looking at Arcturus or another bright star. So we've mentioned in previous videos that the arc from the handle of the plow can help you find the bright star Arcturus. Once you've found Arcturus, that great diamond asterism can help you find three more constellations. And if we bring up our images, there's another one in the middle. So this is Coma Bernetius, or the hair of Bernus. And this constellation is very, very faint. It's got very few bright stars visible inside of it. But if you find that great diamond asterism, the bottom portion of the diamond is mainly Virgo the upper portion there is Coma Bernices. And it is a very hard constellation to spot, but you can infer where it should be. You're looking at the top triangle of that diamond, right in the middle. That's where it has to be, even if it's not visible to your eyes. Something similar can be done looking into the north. The shape of the Little Dipper or Ursa Minor can be very tough to see, especially here in the city. But if you've found the North Star, that's the tail of Ursa Minor. You know that this area must be Ursa Minor because the North Star is in that constellation. And if we bring up our images, there it is. There's Ursa Minor just stretching up just a Above the North Star at this time of the night, nice and early in the evening. Of course, as we push forward to morning time, the Earth will turn and the stars will appear to move. So as we come closer to morning time, we're looking more a little above and more to the left, more towards the west to get that shape of Ursa Minor. If you're in a very dark sky, some of these constellations can become more visible and more obvious because the faint stars that make them up become more visible and more obvious. So pushing back to just about midnight, we won't let things get too bright. We'll take away our images and we'll move back out into the countryside where we can see those extra stars and now there is the very tip of the tail. We can see it curving up to give us that shape, very similar to the shape of a Little Dipper. And of course, many people do call Ursa Minor the Little Dipper and that shape around the North Star. Now that we've moved out into the countryside, we know that Scorpius is there. We can see the lovely central glow of the Milky Way. Sagittarius is just down next to it. I find it a lot easier to recognize Sagittarius when it's a little bit higher in the sky. So here we have Sagittarius with that nice teapot shape. Of course, it's not a teapot. It's meant to be a centaur firing a bow and arrow. I always have a tough time imagining that, even with the lines, even if it's not just the stars, it still looks like a teapot with a little bit of ornamentation to me. 
But if it's earlier in the evening and the bottom part of that teapot is under the horizon, it's going to be a bit more difficult to recognize. But if you have found that shape of Scorpius with the big bright red Antares, the center of the Milky Way is a little on the left, Sagittarius is just at the edge of it there. So if you can see the lovely glow of the Milky Way, Sagittarius is right next to it. And even if you are back in the city with the light pollution, the top portion of Sagittarius is still going to be there, even if it's a little faint, even if you don't recognize its shape, it's going to be in between Scorpius and the planets Jupiter and Saturn over the next few evenings. They're going to get higher at the same time each evening. So you can see for this evening, they're just gracing the horizon as we come to midnight, but as we get later in the month, they'll be higher and higher and visible earlier and earlier. So of course, there's a lot of constellations. There's 88 of them, and not all of them are clear and easy to recognize in the sky. But if you can find some of the brighter stars like Arcturus, the more famous shapes like the plough, you can use those as stepping stones to find other objects, whether you're in the city or in the countryside. So I hope you all get a chance to take a look at those objects over the next few evenings.